Hi, this is Mo Volans for Audio Tuts, and I'm back with another Synthesis screencast here. And you may have seen that I've been doing screencasts on uh, the Mod Matrix, and they were called Demystifying the Mod Matrix Part 1 and 2. And in the comments to some of these, there were some people uh, requesting some basic subtractive synthesis workshops to help them build patches. Now, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to attack it in four different sections to start with. And we're going to be looking at oscillators. We're going to be looking at filters, envelopes, and then LFOs. And if people want some more info and they request more info, I'll keep going with them if they're proving popular. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume a certain amount of knowledge. So I'm going to assume that you already are pretty familiar with each of these subjects. So you know what oscillators are, you know what filters are, envelopes and LFOs. I'm not going to explain what these are. So if you need to know what these things are, I suggest you do some basic reading. What I'm going to try and do is help you use these different areas of the synth and give you three examples in each video of uh, basic creative things that you should be or can be doing at least with these different parts of the synth. Now we're going to start with oscillators and like I say I'm going to assume you know what they are. Um, what all that I'll say is that they're a sound source. I don't want to get too deep into it because we've only got so much time um, but I'm going to be using different synthesizers in each video and in this video I'm going to use Thor. You're probably going to see it again through the four parts because it's a really great synth to teach with. Now, this preset or patch that I've got here has just got one oscillator and it's an analog saw wave. Now, this is a really, really basic setup and a lot of default synth patches come set up like this. So if you've learned the basics and you're presented with a patch like this and you're going to build your own patch, it might be a little bit daunting. You might not know what to do. I'm going to give you a few ideas of where to start and how to create a thick synth patch. Now by itself this sort of single saw wave is pretty basic. Nice and raw, nice and rough and it's usable you know for some sounds but you're going to want to um, expand on this if you're going to be making pads and effects or whatever. So one thing that I like to do and one of the first things I learned to do on synthesizers and it's a great way of uh, creating an instantly thick patch is uh, using detuning. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how detuning works. Um, but straight up, the easiest way uh, to, to use detuning is really just to create a second oscillator uh, that's a duplicate of the original. So in Thor, if I create a second oscillator um, as an analog oscillator, it's going to be another saw wave. Let's activate it using this little LED here. And then if we go to tune and we just maybe offset it, maybe minus seven, uh, just a small amount and make sure it's the semi-tune and not the, uh, the octave tune, otherwise you're going to experience some pretty massive detuning. And that's a different thing we'll look at in a second. Um, but immediately you get a thicker patch. It's sort of a natural chorus and you can control the amount of detuning by this tune amount. So we can go pretty heavy with it. That's 13. And if I hold this down and change the detuning, you'll hear that there's a point where it becomes too much. And that's a really, really simple way of starting a lush pad sound or a great bass sound. Um, and it's, you know, instantly thickened up. Now, obviously, that's a pretty simple move, and you're going to be wanting to do uh, more complex stuff than this. And if you want to do more complex uh, detuning sounds, some synths will have what's called a super saw or a multi oscillator. And luckily, Thor's got one of these, and it says multi oscillate here. And all it really is is what we've just been looking at. It's a saw wave that's layered, and then it's detuned, and it's several saw waves. And this was made famous by the Roland JP8000 here. Um, back in the 90s, if any of you remember this, you're probably as old as I am. But uh, it's, it was a great sort of trance sound, but it's coming back and it's being used in, in house tracks now. So this is really popular and obviously you can layer these, but this is a really easy way of creating a huge uh, detuned sound. And if I turn the amount up here, you'll hear it uh, come into action. And that's pretty basic with no detune. But even about 10-15% of this and you've got a huge detuned multi-wave sound. It's 
So that's a really simple way of getting that effect. And remember, you can layer these as well. Now, talking about layering, we'll come on to our second point now. So think about detuning as a basic way of getting your oscillators to a point where they're a little thicker. And now let's think about mixing different kinds of oscillators. You don't really just want to go analog oscillator, analog oscillator. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great way of doing it. But modern synths now generally have other kinds of synthesis built in. So we've got wavetable, we've got FM synthesis. Um, if we mix different kinds of synthesis, uh, we're going to get some really interesting sounds. We've got a little mixer here. And let's just scroll through a, a, di a few different uh, forms of these oscillators. And now let's try uh, detuning or uh, taking one of them up and down uh, an octave. And that's just a really simple way, again, of creating a, a really fresh timbre. And I've not added any filtering, any effects, or any envelopes. This is just a really quick way of getting a, a rich harmonic start to your sound. So don't stick to the same oscillators. Try detuning and try different forms of synthesis. Now, finally, I'm going to show you two different uh, ways of um, adding beef or a new layer to your sound that's not just about adding new oscillators or different kinds of oscillators. Now I'm going to show you what a sub oscillator is. Now if you've got a sound and it's a bit and it's a bit weak maybe uh, and that's just a single oscillator we might want to add some low end. Now obviously you can um, add EQ uh, this isn't going to be great you know you don't want to use too much processing um, you really want to be as close to your raw sound as possible. One of the best ways to do it is add a sub oscillator. Now again, I'm just going to add the same kind of oscillator here and just go down an octave with this second oscillator. Now in some cases it's a little much, so you might want to mix towards the original oscillator uh, and you know, so you've got less of your sub. And there you have it. A simple sub oscillator. Now you can change the waveform with this sub if you want it to be a little smoother. That's a sine wave and with a sine wave you can probably dial a little bit more of the uh, the sub back in. Really really simple and you can add that on the end of pretty much any synth patch so if you're using two of your oscillators try using it in the third slot and uh, you can always high pass some of that low end off and uh, keep, keep the majority of it. Now finally I want to show you something uh, to do with noise and again it's about adding attitude and it's about adding an extra edge to your sound. If we've say got a couple of multi oscillators and we sort of are creating a nice um, sort of pad sound and I'm going to just have a couple of multi oscillator uh, different, different waveforms going on here and we'll go up an octave with this. But we say, let's say we want a bit more attitude here. We can add some noise. Now, obviously you've got to control this pretty carefully because if it's too loud, it's just going to be a bit overbearing. Yeah, it's a little bit much. But if we dial in just say 50% here, adds real attitude and adds an edge and you can easily control that. Obviously you can have different forms of noise. I, I find white noise tends to work the best for that sort of big chord um, but it's a really nice way of just adding some extra punch and grit into the sound. So there you go. It, oscillators don't have to be complex and they don't have to be scary when you first approach them. Um, it's really really simple to start mixing up your own combinations and they're just a couple of tricks you can use. Uh, when you're getting into designing your own patches. Now I can always do another um, more advanced tutorial on oscillators and the oscillator setups in a different synth maybe. 
um, if you found this reasonably interesting. Next up, I'm going to give you three or four similar tricks um, on filters, and I'm probably going to use Thor and another synthesizer.